Welcome back everyone. It is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here today, back with another educational cryptocurrency tutorial. And today is gonna to be Binance Basics lesson number five, support and resistance. If you haven't already watched our previous videos, make sure to go watch those first if you are new to trading or using Binance. Uh, lesson number one, show you how to create an account. Then I teach you about trade pairs, time frames, and candlesticks. Lesson number three was sending and receiving crypto. And then lesson number four was placing orders. So if you haven't already seen those, make sure to go watch those first. And keep in mind the concepts I'm teaching you for this series aren't necessarily just applied specifically to Binance US. You can use these concepts on any other cryptocurrency exchange, whether it's Coinbase, Kraken, Coinami, KuCoin, whatever cryptocurrency exchange you're using most of these concepts can be applied to those exchanges as well um, so let's hop right into it if you haven't already started a binance us account make sure to watch this video and click the link and sign up for your binance us account and once you've got your account all set up this is what your home page is going to look like and to, in order to get to your trading page you're going to go up here to the trade tab and go to spot trading and what this is going to do is open up the trading view advanced trading interface here on binance us let me shrink myself down a little bit here now one thing you're going to want to make sure to do is make sure you are highlighted and clicked on this trading view um, version of the chart here if you go original it's just a lot harder to navigate you don't have near as much customization on the original chart so make sure to switch it over to trading view that's going to open up a lot more tools for you to use and make it a lot more efficient for technical analysis charting um, so let me hit this full screen button here in the previous videos i already showed you guys all about this whole right side of the screen orders uh, order book and all of that so now we're going to be focusing on the actual candlestick chart itself where we're going to go over some technical analysis tools so I'm gonna go ahead and make it full screen again and today like I mentioned we're gonna be talking about support and resistance I am here on the Bitcoin versus US dollar chart and I am on the one day candlestick chart here where each candlestick is representing one day in time 24 hours so if we go way back here we can see this was way back in you know 2020 when Bitcoin had a big blow up to you know almost 60,000 obviously we had that pullback here and then we had that climb to almost 70,000 and then we had crypto winter where it took us down to about 15,000. And now we've made a steady climb and we're sitting right around 30,000 once again. First, we need to talk about what support and resistance is. So an easy way to think about support and resistance is you have to remember one important thing is that this market, buyers and sellers are in a constant battle for equilibrium. Buyers and sellers are trying to find a price that everyone in the world will agree upon that this is what Bitcoin is worth. So that is why some people sell when it gets higher because they think it's overvalued or people buy when it's lower because they think it's undervalued. So people that are buying and trying to push the market up are going to be called market bulls and people that are selling and trying to push the market down are going to be called market bears. So what support is, um, you can think of support and resistance also as price floors and ceilings. What these price points do is they show buyer and seller interest. They show respected price levels for a certain commodity or traded asset. So what we're doing right here, we're looking at Bitcoin and we can see that right about here, let's just take this little chunk in time right here, for example, right around here. So we saw this Bitcoin climb up to about 42,000 and then it dropped down here to about 28, uh, 29,000. So what a level of support is, support is always gonna be on the bottom, support is going to be a price floor. So what we notice is that there was an obvious downtrend, right? Bitcoin was on an uprise, 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 it hit this point and then at this point, there wasn't enough buyers interested and there was more sellers interested at this point. So the price got pushed down as people continuously sold Bitcoin all the way until it hit this level. And then you can see it kind of bounced off of it, came back down to this level and bounced off of it again. And if you actually scroll all the way out, all the way out over to current price you can actually see that we are fighting support on that same exact price point all the way back here from almost two years ago the way that we identify a point of support is we are going to look at where this downtrend started right so this downtrend started and then we saw it get all the way down to here and then we saw it take back off so this lower wick here this exact point and we went over what wicks mean and what the thick part of the candlesticks mean in our earlier lesson. So make sure to go watch that if you haven't learned what candlesticks are. But at this point, we can see that the price went down. And again, remember that we're on the daily chart. And on this day, this is where the price went down and found buyer interest right there. So wherever that price bounced back off of on the way down and found buyer interest is where support is going to be created. So what I do when I'm doing technical analysis is I find that level of support, which would be here right at about 29,000. So we're gonna find that point right here, use this tool over on the left called the horizontal ray tool. 
and I'm going to drop a line right there on that level of support. I'm gonna make it a red solid line. You can use these charting tools up here. You can click on the line, edit it, delete it, hide it, anything like that. Super nice on Binance because they have so many tools. And so what this did, right, again, we had a downtrend and then we had buyer interest at this price point of $30,000. One thing you'll notice is a lot of times these support and resistance levels are going to fall around even psychological numbers such as 30,000, 50,000, 100,000, just because that's a psychological level that us as humans have in our mind while we're thinking about price. We're like, oh, on the next bull run, Bitcoin's going to hit a hundred grand. And that's a psychological price where we're like, okay, well, maybe I'm going to take some profits at a hundred grand, or maybe I'm going to sell at a hundred grand because that seems a little high. So a lot of times these support and resistance like this one that fell around 29,000 are going to fall around those even type numbers. So here we found that level of support. I'm going to go ahead and circle it and label it buyer's interest because at that price, we had buyers interest in purchasing this asset, Bitcoin. Right, buyer interest at this price point right there, 29,000, okay? And so now that we have established that level of support, we can see that again, you know, uh, we can see here that the buyers brought the price back up, sellers brought it back down, and it bounced off of that again, all right? And then that's where we went into this crazy bull run of 2020, 2021, where Bitcoin hit like 60,000 and then 70,000. But check this out. We can see here that when Bitcoin hit the 65K and then it found another downtrend here, look where this price stopped on its way down again. It bounced right back off of that same exact support line. And you can see that it touched once, twice, three times here. Obviously that support level has buyer interest. And then if we scroll over once again, Look at that. You found support here. It was touching. It was trying to break through. And then it finally broke through there. And so that's one thing to keep in mind about support and resistance is that once those levels are broken and candles close below them, it almost acts as a floodgate to where you have that buyer support holding that price up right there around 29,000. And then notice that once it finally did break through, boom, big downtrend here where it broke all the way down to 17,000. So once it finally broke that psychological support level of 29,000, it broke through. There wasn't enough buyers to hold the price up and sellers pushed the price down almost another $10,000. So you can see that once that support has broken through, it really releases the floodgate. And now you can see we, we went down and we broke back up through this support. And then once again, this is today, this is July 25th, 2023. The price went up above it and we came back down and now we're seeing support around that same exact level again right? And so a lot of times what I'll do, um, the more that support lines get tested, the weaker they get. So if I was doing technical analysis charting right here, one thing I would notice is that once it touched this line, what I would do is actually take this line and turn it into a dotted line. And the reason I do that is just to show me that this support level has gotten weaker. The more times that it gets tested, and this is what I call a test, when it touches it, bounces off. Test, test, the more times that a level gets tested, the weaker it becomes. And on about the fifth or sixth test right here, it finally broke through. So the more times it tested, I like to make the line even more dotted. So I know that it's getting weaker and weaker, right? So boom, there's our level of support. Now resistance, on the other hand, acts the exact opposite way. Instead of acting as a price floor, it's going to act as a resistance or a price point ceiling. So for resistance, let's say we were doing some charting and we see this zone here. Let's say we we're about at this point in time. So here we can identify an obvious uptrend right here from the bottom of this line. We can see that the price point is going obviously up right there, right? Now, again, in order to find the support or resistance, you want to find that spot where the next opposite trend started. So we were on an uptrend and then this red candle was the first start of the downtrend. Now, a lot of people will mark the wicks as so where they'll say, OK, well, this was the top of the uptrend and that's where it stopped. So that's going to be my uh, resistance. But what you actually want to do is start your resistance level from where the next trend started. So we had the uptrend. And then the downtrend actually started on this particular red candle on February 10th of 2022. And so we're going to put that line here. And actually, I think I got my colors backwards here. Typically, I'm going to do my supports green because you can buy on supports. And the reason I'm saying that is let's say you saw that this level got tested here, created a support, tested again, boom. And it, as it got closer to this support, let's say you were expecting it to bounce off of this support again. So you could take a potential entry here, buy in right on that support, and you could have picked up a few percent right here over a few days.
series. And then same thing here, hit this support again. That is a buy signal because we are hitting our support. And if it broke through, hopefully you would have a proper stop loss set up to save you from losing too much. But again, you'd want to buy there. Um, so yeah, usually I have my support levels green because it signals buy. And then typically I will make my resistance lines red because it signals a sell. Um, so I had that backwards at the beginning, but yeah, green support, red resistance. You can color code these any way you want. This just makes more sense to me. Um, but back to what I was saying right here, we had this uptrend once again, and boom, downtrend started right here, right about 45,600. So that identifies our, our level of resistance or price ceiling. We can see that there was obviously seller's interest at this point. Once it hit there, it went down. And as you can see, it got up close again. And to me, this is close enough to be considered a test right here, even though it didn't quite hit that level, it obviously showed this zone was a general zone for a seller interest. So I would go ahead and make that spotted at that point. And now you can see once again, it got a little bit weaker, did actually end up breaking through, didn't go too far above it, came back down. And so that right there is a level of resistance. And the way you can use those is, let's say you know that there's seller interest at this price point. So if you bought in down here based on, look, we have a support here, so we're gonna create a trading zone. Again, we're getting a little bit more in depth here, but um, boom, right here, I see the start of an uptrend, right? So there is a uh, support level. And so let's say you saw that support level, boom, and then you hit resistance. And this creates what they call a trading zone, right? The level in between resistance and support. This is where it's gonna be bouncing back and forth and you can make really good profits by day trading if you are able to properly identify these trading zones based on support and resistance. Um, so here we had downtrend, boom. We had, uh, then boom, we had support identified, test and back down. So if you bought in here, right, you'd be looking for your next resistance spot where you would exit the trade, which would be up here. So if you properly bought in on your previously identified support and sold at your previously identified resistance and you took full advantage of that trading zone movement, right there, you could literally make just by buying in, that is a 21% move. So you're done trading for the month. Like you could take 21% on a few days. I guess it's over the course of 20 days, but boom, that's a solid trade right there. Um, and you know, like I was saying earlier, it's not always going to be a guaranteed, um, you know, success. That's why you want to make sure to have a proper, uh, risk to reward ratio set up you want to be willing to gain x amount of percent but only lose y amount of percent so let's say again here obviously we're in the trading zone and we hit this support again and maybe you thought it was a buy because we hit that support but then look what it did it went way down so you'd want to make sure you have a proper stop limit set maybe one two percent right there to exit out on the trade so you don't lose a ton of money um, so there we have a pretty solid trading zone identified one thing though to keep in mind about these levels and these lines of support and resistance is they last for infinity right because future trends are going to be based on past historical data and not always but the past is usually going to repeat itself you know obviously when we have new all-time highs being broken and that type of thing the past isn't always going to tell what the future might do but it's always a pretty good indicator as you can see we identified this support line way back in 2021 almost 2020 and still to this day uh, more than two years later, it's still playing a role right here. So this would actually be a great entry point um, right here on the support level. And then I would be looking to sell on a resistance level. So here I can see an obvious another downtrend started. Boom, right on the tip of that red candle, make that red. And then I've got a trading zone here that I can play within. So I am actually currently at the support. So this would be a great buy entry here. And if we were to buy and then attempt to sell on the resistance level, we would have a gain of about uh, almost 9%. So a really great trade right there. Um, obviously, I'd set my stop loss down here somewhere. So if it did go the opposite direction, I would be saved there. Um, but that is the basic drawing of support and resistance levels here. You just need to remember that support is going to be your price floors where there's been obvious buyer interest and resistance is going to be where there's seller interest at these highs and these starts of these downtrends. Um, so again, buyer interest down here, boom, up here we have seller interest. So if we look at our highest level of resistance currently on the Bitcoin chart, the highest it's ever been was 69,000. So there's gonna be a huge resistance right there. There's gonna be a lot of sellers looking to get out right there at the old time high. Um, so you can expect a big rejection at that point. Or if Bitcoin's on a huge bull run, it could just break right through that resistance. And if it does, chances are we're gonna see a huge uptrend. Um, you know, on the next bull run, I really think we could see $100,000 per Bitcoin. One thing I also just noticed is this price that it was rejected out about a week ago was this resistance here we can see a start of a downtrend here so we'd put a line there 
And then sure enough, look where that price bounced off of on the way up the other day. So now we are still stuck in this trading zone. And one other thing to keep in mind about these levels is that old resistance will turn into new support once the next level is broken. And old support will turn into new resistance once the next level is broken. And what I mean by that is right now we're in this little trading zone, right? And we've got our support here. We got bounce. Um, we got a touch there. We got our support and we got our resistance. So let's say that the price, um, let me change this to blue. Let's say that the price comes up and does something like this, bounces, you know, comes down, moves up. And let's say it touches this next level. As soon as that next level is broken or tested, I will change that to a dotted line. Then, then this old resistance will become the new support. It does not become the new support until the next level up is tested or broken. Same thing on the way down. And so the way that would work is let's say the price came up here, boom, all of a sudden this old resistance turns into new support. It acts like a stair, a ladder system, right? Um, so I'm gonna turn this one green now. So now we have a new trading zone. This level has been tested and broken. So now this is our next immediate support and this is our next immediate resistance. So we can now turn that into a resistance line. And now we have this zone. So now we can expect the coin and price to come back in between these two zones. Let's do it again. We could go back and identify the next downtrend. Um, so right here, we see an obvious downtrend start right about 47,000. So let me put my red uh, line there, make it solid. That has not been tested yet, right? So now we've got these lines that extend all the way out to here. And let's say we're boom, you know, we're going in between these trading zones. And then let's say finally, you know, our next level gets tested. Boom, we break another, we gain another level. Now, this will once again turn into our new level of support. Now, keep in mind, guys, these are just technical analysis tools. These are not guaranteed or surefire ways to, to predict the movement of the market. They are just simply tools to help you. There are a lot of other things that need to play into your judgment of when to buy and sell coins, fundamental analysis, news, that sort of stuff. Um, so these are just tools. They're not going to work 100% of the time, but they are going to work a lot of the time. So boom we break that test that new level now we have a new support here and now we'll be in between this trading zone right let's say we found the next support next resistance up here same thing once this finally got touched boom now this one's going to turn into our new support okay and so on and so forth and it'll work the same in the opposite direction for old supports turning into new resistances once it came down tested this level boom now this would turn into our next immediate resistance just like that. So I know this is a lot of information and hopefully it's not too confusing, but if you guys have any questions about this sort of stuff, please leave them in the comments down below. Um, so one more point to go over is kind of when you are doing technical analysis trading, I like to do something called top down analysis. And what this basically means is obviously you have your different candlestick zones here. You've got your month, your week, your day. What you need to know is that weekly and monthly support and resistance levels are going to be much stronger levels than let's say like your hourly resistance because you will be able to identify different levels of support and resistance and different trading zones in different time frames. So we can see on the weekly chart, obviously the candles are one week long, so there's a lot less minute data available. You can just kind of see a lot of the bigger macro movements. But these weekly support lines are gonna play the biggest factors. They are gonna be much stronger than your hourly support line. So if you're looking at like the weekly or the daily chart, chances are you might be like a swing trader or a position trader where you're picking up and buying coins and selling. You know, you might be holding a trade for a week to two weeks to three weeks. But if you're trading on like the hour chart, you might be a day trader where you're trying to hold your positions for just a few hours or maybe 12 to 20. 24 hours. If you're a scalper, you might be looking at like the 15 minute chart or the five minute chart and just trying to catch really small micro movements where you can make a few percent at a time, but you do a bunch of those a day and it really adds up pretty quick. When I'm day trading, I always make it my goal to make about 3% a day. Um, if you're doing like a Monday through Friday, that's 15% a week. So there's a few ways you can always go about that when you're day trading. You could try to do, you know, if you need 3% a day, you could get that out of three 1% profit trades a day. Or if you need 15% a week, you could do two 7.5% trades a week. So it really just depends on your style. Obviously, if you're day trading or scalping, you're gonna have to be on your computer watching a lot more often and paying really close attention all the time, setting alarms, setting alerts, that sort of stuff. Whereas if you're swing trading or position trading, it's a little bit less stressful. You can kind of plan it out a little bit better, make your entry, 
and then just kind of be hands off for a few days and just wait to either hit your take profit or your stop loss. Um, but here I am on the hourly long chart. So a lot of times what you can do is you can color code your different levels of resistance um, based on the time frame that you're looking at. So if I zoom in here, we're going to see a lot more data that we couldn't actually see on the daily and the weekly chart. We're seeing a more zoomed in picture of the actual price movement. So I'm on the hour long chart here. And so if I'm looking in here, I can see uh, boom. And one thing you'll notice too, is when you get close to levels of support and resistance, you'll notice these periods of what they call accumulation, right? People are just kind of moving the coins around a little bit. There's not a whole lot of volume. You can see down here at the bottom, the volume really died down. Wasn't a whole lot of movement because people kind of found maybe some market equilibrium and a price they were kind of happy with. But once it breaks out of those zones, you can see the volume boosts. And then once again, it slows down once it hits different levels and you'll see another period of accumulation. So let me erase all my levels here. I'm going to right click and go remove all drawing tools. Boom. There goes all my lines. Knowing that your weekly and daily support and resistance levels are stronger. A lot of times what people will do is color code their lines based on the time frame that they're looking at. So here, let's just say for weekly, um, I'm going to do white. W for weekly, W for white. If I was going to go through and do some technical analysis on a coin that I haven't charted yet, I would start on my weekly chart, right? Top down analysis, because these weekly charts are going to have the strongest impact on future movement. So I'd go through, I've got resistance, I've got resistance, I've got more resistance there. Um, that's about it for now on the weekly. And then I would go through and put my supports. We've got obvious support there. We've got a little bit more support there. And then we've got our next start of uptrend about there. So those are my really strong weekly levels. So I know that those are white. And then what I would do for my top down analysis is go down to my daily levels. Now for my daily levels, I would use a different color, maybe blue. So what I would do is take my ray, take my line tool again, and I would go through and now I can see more levels, right? I can see that there's another level of resistance here that I couldn't quite see on the weekly chart. I can see that there is another level, another level here, which played an importance there. See this trading zone. And as you do this top down analysis, more and more information becomes available to you, more information you can use to make buying and selling decisions. So I can see I've got another downtrend there. Um, another one here. So those are kind of my daily levels. So I know that my white ones are going to be a lot stronger. And sure enough, you can see we're sitting on a weekly level right now. See, these are all levels I drew from the past. And you just see how much of a role they play here. Here we have a trading zone here. We have another trading zone. So I've got my weekly and dailies. And then I'll usually go down to, let's say, I'll do the one hour chart. Sometimes people like to chart like a four hour, um, but I like to do the one hour. And so then again, I can zoom in, I get even more local information based on price action. Let's say for my hourly chart, I'm going to go yellow. So now that I zoom in even more, I'm going to get more and more levels that start showing up yellow. And one thing you can do too, is you can go to your settings and you can go to visibility and you can make some of these lines only visible within the certain time frames that you're looking at. So sometimes I don't want all these lines available because if I drew this one hour resistance line here and then I go to my weekly chart and then find that line, you're going to see that it doesn't really show you anything like it's not going to show you where it's actually starting. And so a lot of times that's just clogging up your screen. So, so if you go into your settings and visibility and just uh, make it only visible on those certain days that you're using, then when you go back, it's going to make your screen a lot more organized and not have all those kind of different lines clogging up your screen. Um, but let me go back to the hourly chart here, find a few more levels. Again, super easy if we're just kind of looking at these past few days here. We've got boom, obvious resistance, boom, obvious support. And look at that, the support and resistance right at the beginning of this zone. Look how long, look how long this coin stayed within that trading zone. That's so many different trades you could pick up for profit. If you bought on support and sold on resistance, boom, there's a 4% move there. And then you go down the line. If you bought on support and sold on resistance, there's another one there, 4.7%. So you can see that you create these zones where you can just see the price movement going back and forth between. It's not, it seems super complicated, but if you just think of it in terms of numbers and leave the emotion out of it, it's really not too difficult. Um, so here we are over the last few hours, we've got some obvious downtrend there. That's going to play some resistance. And then we've got our support down here. Um, and then if you are going to do any day trading or scalping, you can even go down to the 15 or five minute chart. I'm going to go here to the five minute chart, zoom in even more. If I was scalping, I would kind of look at the past few hours, see what the price has been doing and then pick a new color for the different chart, go pink. I can see a downtrend start there. There's our, there's our resistance. I can see we have some support here. There is support and even more local support right there. And 
and another downtrend that started right there. As you go down in timeframes, you get access to more and more information and you can start using these different numbers and pieces of information to make educated decisions on when you should purchase or sell coins. Um, so that is a quick rundown of top down analysis. Again, you start from the weekly candle chart, start make, marking your support and resistance and work your way down to like the five minute chart. Um, so again, guys, today, a lot of information about support and resistance, but if you just try to think of it in the most basic way as possible, the key things you need to remember are price of a crypto coin is constantly trying to reach equilibrium. You have buyers and you have sellers trying to fight for this even price that everyone will agree upon. Um, support and resistance will act as price floors and ceilings where there is buyer or seller interest, right? Like at $100,000, there's going to be a big resistance because a lot of people are going to want to take profit once Bitcoin hits 100K. But as Bitcoin gets lower and lower, like let's say 15,000, you're going to see that people are going to want to buy a lot more. Another way you can kind of identify support and resistance as well is through the order book. If I switch it to a different decimal here, and we went over the order book in a previous video, um, I can see that at so right now we're sitting around 29,200 and it, right here the order book shows me that at 29,000 the price of 29,000 there is $332,000 worth of people um, wanting to buy there so that would show obvious support at 29,000 same thing on the way up I can see here at 29,600 there's 37 Bitcoin for sale so for some reason whatever that price point is probably based on an old resistance level there's a lot of people looking to sell at 29,600 so that shows you a sell wall or a price ceiling or a resistance level all three of those phrases mean about the same thing so you can kind of look at the order book as well to see where people are trying to buy and sell to all also identify support and resistance. So again, a bunch of information, but if you guys have any questions about any of this, please leave it in the comments below. Um, also leave a comment on what sort of tutorial or educational videos you guys wanna see next. I think I'm gonna start doing a lot more reporting on like current crypto events and the future of crypto and that sort of thing. So if you guys enjoyed or learned anything from this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment on the video. Also make sure to subscribe so you can catch our future videos. It also helps support us so we can keep making these videos for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed and catch you next time.